No kidding. Today's Woman of the Hour made her television debut 25 years ago at the age of three. This little girl is the youngest Osmond brother. <laughs> now she's their sister, Marie. Marie? The only girl in a family of eight brothers, Marie Osmond, virtually grew up on national television between 1975 and 1979. Mama. She boasted her first hit record at age 13, while no longer America's favorite teenager, this wife and mother hasn't stopped performing, however. She's on the tour across the country 250 days a year. Her new album, All in Love, will hit the record store soon. Please welcome my woman of the hour, Marie Osmond. Oh. I couldn't decide what to wear in that, so they just kept it. <laughs> now, <clears throat> with so much time on the road, how old is Stephen James now, your son? Uh, my son, is, he just turned five. All right, with all that time on the road, how do you have any time for a, I don't know, do you have a normal life or is this a big bus? <laughs> huh? Well, it's normal to me, Gary. I grew up on the road and uh, I feel very fortunate because I perform at night and uh, I have all day with mm -hmm. my children. And so I feel that uh, I'm very fortunate in that fact that I get to have them with me. I take them everywhere we go my busiest time of the year is summer and so he's not in school and it works out very well that's what my parents did and we we became very close i i really love spending time with my children now you mentioned children because there is another child it's jessica i'm uh -huh. not sure how old jessica is jessica's five months old you and your i think your husband uh, brian blossom was a record producer is he not yes uh -huh, he's <clears throat> and jessica's adopted yes uh -huh. yeah decision well, you Is know, something that just came into your life, and you we weren't looking, mm -hmm. and uh, some, you know, to make a long story short, <laughs> we uh, had a call from some people and asked if we would be interested, and uh, kind of took me off guard for a minute, and uh, we thought a lot about it, and uh, just felt really good about it. I guess that's all you can really say. And she is, well, I didn't know what it would be. I found out it was a girl, and I went, oh yeah. <laughs> Well, just wait. Brian's going to do that when she gets so a little older. so much like my son, and we yeah. just adore her. There's no difference. She's wonderful. When the Donnie Marie show uh, was finally canceled, because you did have a nice run with that, you mm -hmm. decided to turn, make a change in direction in your career, and go to country music. And it wasn't easy for you, I know. Uh, but you stuck with it. You went through a couple of labels. Uh, you moved, I suppose. You live a little time in Nashville, do you not? Yeah, we're half and half. Yeah. Uh -huh. But this was very important to you. Why was it so important to go into country music? Well, Gary, actually, I started out with country music. Paper Roses, I was about oh, I 13, right. yeah. was my first uh, country. And we did a little bit country, rock and roll, you know, mm -hmm. so I always, I always have enjoyed country music. But um, I think where a lot of people remember is in the variety situation, we did so many different kinds of music, and I was raised with so many different kinds of styles. But I really love country. And you're right, you know, nothing comes easily. I went in and... We tried several producers, and finally with Capital, uh, things just clicked. Found the right producer, and things have been very well. We've had uh, number one records, thanks to all of you guys. Yeah, and you've got the new album, all uh -huh. in And this is our third album with Capital. Yeah. You have so many fans. So many people became so enchanted with Marie Osmond and followed everything that she did, up to and including your first marriage and a very public divorce. My question, I guess, would be, and a lot of people would like to know this, did you feel a lot of pressure to be perfect. <laughs> well, I mean, that was, a, that was a big admission to get a divorce, at least for, for, for an Osborne. Well, I don't think anybody goes into it with that idea. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's not something that I ever would have done unless it was an absolute mm -hmm. uh, mess. I have a great deal of compassion, I think, for people that go through it. But even from the time I was young, I mean, it was difficult to grow up on national television. And uh, you say this is perfect. It was difficult to be, you know, 15 years old and stand next to Raquel Welsh. And so, I mean, you know, we had our own little interesting things to go through. But with that, um, you just kind of have to do what is right. And uh, I'm sure you must have heard from a, from a lot of people. And can you tell me just briefly what, what kind of comment you received 
after you went through that? Did you receive any, for example, thank God you're not perfect. You're a human. Oh, I'm not perfect. <laughs> no, no, I don't mean that. But, I mean, people perceived you. Uh, I mean, your family was... Life isn't easy for anybody. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we all have our challenges and things to go through. But uh, I, I love my son, and uh, there are certain things in life you can't compromise. Uh, no matter what the cost and like I said you just have to kind of do what's right and eventually things work out and I'm very happy now well, married to a happy. wonderful guy we're very happy that you're happy and you're here today and in a moment when we come back we're going to talk about something that is very near and dear uh, oh, yeah. to Marie's heart and it, it uh, has to do with children so we'll be back with that You may remember this incident. In December 1987, 11-year-old Alvaro Garza Jr. fell through the ice in North Dakota. He was underwater for 45 minutes. Pediatric Trauma Center's role of coordinating the rescue team and the children's hospital's preparation allowed us to handle this resuscitation and the following medical crisis very well. Today was a big day for me and my family. This morning, Alvaro Jr. talked to us. The first words he spoke to us were that he was hungry. It was indeed a miracle, and that hospital, St. Luke's Children's Hospital in Fargo, North Dakota, is a member of the Children's Miracle Network. This marks the sixth year of the Children's Miracle Network Telethon, which Marie Osmond is co-chairperson. The 21-hour telecast will be broadcast live from Disneyland beginning tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, and we thought it'd be nice to spend a couple of minutes and, and talk about the telethon. How did it evolve? You and uh, John Schneider, what, co-chair people? Persons. That's right. We started, uh, like you said, six years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, it was just really an idea that we had. There, there are a lot of wonderful charities, and um, they all find cures, and then there comes the point where the kids have to be treated. And these wonderful institutions are all over the world, and they never turn a child away, and we thought, well, let's come up with a way to help them out. And um, thus, the Children's Miracle Network Telethon, uh, we have a hundred and... Oh, 80 hospitals involved. Mm -hmm. We're in six countries, and uh, it's really one of the, the most wonderful things that, that uh, I've ever been involved in. It's, it's produced by the Osmond Foundation, yeah. and uh, what it's makes exciting. It, <clears throat> what makes it so phenomenally successful uh, in, in relationship to other, other charitable telethons? I, it's, it's just, it does incredibly well, and everybody's trying to figure out what the equation is because <laughs> they'd like to borrow it. What do you think the answer yeah, is? I wish every, every uh, service for whatever cause can be successful. They're all wonderful. But I think the thing that's unique about this one is the fact that 100% of the money that's raised stays in each local area that it's raised in. So when people donate, uh, they write their checks to their local children's hospital. And uh, all the funds, 100% of it, goes to the kids. So there's no, <clears throat> there's no administrative cost? There's no I, I suppose, large foundation or, or so forth. Who, who, who supports the, the telethon and the, the cost of that? Uh, is that done by donation? The whole thing is underwritten yeah. prior to the oh, show. And it, uh, where it costs a lot, I guess like a million plus to put one on, it costs mm -hmm. us about $250,000, which is all underwritten by a corporate sponsor. My time's donated. Everybody, yes. John Schneider and Bob Hope and Merlin Olson and everybody, we all do because we love kids. Well, maybe that's the key. 100% and, of it stays. Well, and the television stations, they donate mm -hmm. their time, and we do it live from Disneyland, and Disney has donated their time and their satellite uplinks into Epcot, and we're in Disney Tokyo, and in 1992, we'll be in Euro Tokyo over so in France. So the televisions offer this time to you? They do. And it's really... See, that's very rare. That's the thing. When you say a miracle, we started our first year, we raised $4 million, mm -hmm. and this year, in our sixth year, we hope to raise in an excess of $50 million as I said, phenomenally successful. You always have a, 
impressive list of celebrities. I mean, how do you go about selecting the people that are going to be on the <laughs> telethon? I, you know, when we started, we called a few of our friends and we said, would you mind uh, being on this, uh, this telethon? This is the idea, this is the concept, and it was very appealing to them. And now they call us. Yeah. <laughs> so it's exciting. That's great. Well, we look forward to it. Don't forget, that's uh, tomorrow, 9 p.m. from Disneyland, the uh, Children's Miracle Network telethon. I'll be right back with today's Woman of the Hour, Marie Osmond. Today's Woman of the Hour, Marie Osmond, and you may remember a couple of segments back, we finished uh, the first segment with Marie, and we had a video on there, and you remember the little boy running across the, uh, the, the decking outside the house? I think we've got a still of that. I want to show you. This is baby Stephen James. How old is Stephen? Well, he, he's three and a half there. He's five Look now. Look at him. Well, and he's so cute, I can't stand it. <laughs> yeah. What... Uh, what kind of perspective do you have, uh, I mean, growing up in a, in a very large family, sort of the last one to come along, and now you've got this time to lavish on, on, on Stephen and also on baby Jessica? Well, you mean like being on the road and the time that I have with them yeah. there, is that what you mean? I, uh, and also what it's done for you. I mean, uh, it certainly adds a little more dimension to you in terms of... Oh, I think kids are the greatest things in the world. It gives you a whole new perspective to life. I've, you know, I'm, I'm young. I'm 28 years old. And uh, I've done a lot of things in my life. And I think that children give you a whole different perspective that's just wonderful. You know, one of the, the great things now, being on the road, um, we, we work quite hard, and I really believe in, in raising my own kids. You mm -hmm. know, I want them to be with me just like my mother did with us. And uh, it's really fun now because they do, it, the lady, uh, the gal uh, that talked about her father and writing, and I was really curious, oh, and now Angelique she writes, yeah. Angelique. And uh, it happens. Children just pick up what you do. Stephen uh, wants to start performing. He told me the other day, he says, I'm serious, Mom, I really want to do it. <laughs> and, I, and I looked at him, I said, now you know what you're getting into. It's in into. the genes. It's in the genes. Alan was here with his six little ones. I oh, understand yeah. they've had a seventh. They have and a, a girl. seventh boy. Hallelujah. Boy. A oh, boy. Not a girl. Well, who had the girl? Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> I guess I'm thinking but, of Jessica. But it's so funny because he watches TV and, and he loves George Strait and he wants to dance mm -hmm. like uh, Dwight Yoakam. And so, I have no you know, idea who <laughs> Dwight Yoakam is. Who is it? Oh, he's, he's very cool. He you, is? You'd like that's him. all I need no. to know. That's what my daughter tells me. That's all you need to know, Dad. <laughs> but, but why, uh, why do you work so hard? 250 days on the road is a lot. Because I enjoy it, and uh, you know, if I if I ever stop enjoying it or it becomes too hard, I'll quit and and find something else to do. I love t I have a lot of interest, but I really enjoy people, and uh, I've grown up. This is what I've done my whole life so far. And, as a matter of fact, I was talking to Bob Hope uh, a month ago, and he Name celebrated dropper. his 85th birthday, and. Uh, he said, are you going to keep doing this after 25? He says, I'm do I've done it 50 now. And, uh, you know, I'd love to. I really enjoy it. And um, it's, it really is a lot of fun. I guess if you like doing it, you should continue Well, it's to a do lot it. of work, you know, but it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. All in Love, the, uh, the album is going to be out shortly. Is country, mm -hmm. middle of the road, um, is it heavy country or... or well, I'm not traditional country, yeah. you know, all of Randy Travis or mm -hmm. uh, Reba McIntyre, but I, it's hard to classify music. I, um, I don't know, I'm a little more contemporary country, maybe not quite as contemporary as, as uh, a Kenny or an Ann Murray or something like that, but I don't classify my music. I kind of sing songs I like, and I really enjoy it. Um, there's nothing... That, that I love more than going into Nashville and listening to hundreds and hundreds of songs and finally picking ten that you love and yeah. going in the studio and recording them. It is exciting, Nashville, isn't it? It is. Oh, it's a, there's a great uh, feeling there. A lot well, of we'll look for the album. People. It's called All in Love. And, of course, with 250 days on the road, uh, she'll be in your neighborhood Somewhere. very soon, I'm sure. <laughs> Our guest, Marie Osmond, thanks for being on the to hour today. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.
This is Gary Collins, uh, wrapping up today's edition of Our Magazine. Reminding you do try to make every hour count. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Thanks for being with us. Tonight at 7.30, catch Maury Povich with people, profiles, and exposés on A Current Affair.